Hello and thank you for staying with us. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and lifestyle gist. My name is Ossie Godwin and I've got my pop of girls with me, Nimide Kombi and Ife Omai. How are you Hi. doing? Lovely today. Is that a plan? to do what? The African, African vibes. Yes. Yes. Ghanians, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to see you. They're mm -hmm. happy. Mm -hmm. They're happy. Any Africa. plans for today? Being uh, Friday or yeah. it's well, coronavirus. Oh, that's so isolated. Yes, right. exactly. Do my pop daddy vibe mm -hmm. in the house. Right. Mm -hmm. Please do a lot of videos. So if you're my contact, I'm sorry in advance. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll be entertaining you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I'm with you on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So Nollywood movies um, commit men to bondage of sins and immorality. And this is coming from Mike Bamiloyi, stating that what he practices is drama ministry and not Nollywood. He said, and I quote, there is no value the Nollywood artists are coming to add to the gospel movie productions. Souls are getting saved and lives are getting touched. And the church is getting edified. People are getting happier with the results of gospel movie productions and we are satisfied with these testimonies. Our influence have gone far beyond the shores of Nigeria and all over Europe and America. The people know the difference between the gospel movies and Nollywood movies. The gospel movies heal and deliver from the power of darkness. Nollywood movies entertains and entertains tangles with webs of human philosophies and ungodly principles. Gospel uh, movies set men free from the bondage of the devil by the power of the Holy Ghost, but Nollywood movies bound men in bondages of sins, immorality, and violence. Therefore, there is no values um, the Nollywood artist can add to the gospel movie. It is way more than that, but I have to stop there. Yeah. Um, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I think it's understandable and he, he has every right to think that way. He's a pastor and his job is to sanctify the soul and the spirit. So he's doing that. Um, but um, I just, I, he needs to keep that in his bubble. And if he's, and I like that, that this message does that. He separates the two. He's not saying that we should all be in gospel Hollywood, Nollywood. Um, so yeah, I mean, he has his own rights to say that. Uh, if if you as a consumer or as a yeah yeah a consumer of movies, you decide what you want to watch. Do you want to watch things that are circular or do you want to watch things that are Christian? So if you do we do have that, this segregation or disparity in Hollywood? That's what I that mean, is. I know I, I, there are movies I watch. Say I'm following Greenleaf. I don't know if any of you is, doing, is following it as well. And I mean, it's, it's a Christian movie and it is awesome. But when they categorize it, it's still Hollywood. Yeah, it's still so mm. is there a need for this separation? And again, I think mm. that when you even look at a lot of Nollywood movies, which is why I find this take very ridiculous. When you look at a lot of Holly, um, Nollywood movies, there's always a little bit, even if it is not too much, there's religion. always a little bit of religion in it. Right. It's either you have a movie where, okay, um, the antagonist is a spiritualist, and then the person goes to a pastor, and then the person receives his deliverance. You know, there's always a hint of that in some of the movies. So would you say that if somebody watches that kind of movie, wouldn't the person be, quote-unquote, edified? Mm. And wouldn't the person learn something? Oh, please, have you seen God Calling? Uh, do you understand? There are a lot that of movie Nollywood is movies that, that have good messages. And I think that movie so, was the only thing that pre to me in 2019. Mm. Can you imagine mm. a secular movie? Yeah, so I think it's a gospel movie. It's, kind of, but then yeah, it has secular, secular actors in, because yeah. you know you yeah, 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 yeah. right yeah. You were saying that um, there are some actors yeah. that they are Christians, yeah. but because of the fact that he they are not in the, yeah. the, the gospel, gospel but yeah. they are not. Do you understand? He said they can use the crew, the camera guys, mm. those behind no, no, the scenes, but they cannot the person, use the actors. The actors. And come they on, they not was in that movie. They not is a secular Nollywood actor. She doesn't do gospel movies, so I don't really agree with his line of thought because he has also said something like watching secular movies is a sin, and he has a huge platform. A lot of people watch Mike Bamiloye's movies. A lot of Christians. And I think a lot of people buy into that message. To be honest yeah, with you, that, I don't that, think that's just what and, I mean. Yeah, what you keep saying was like, I don't buy into it. I'm like, I feel you on that because I personally don't buy into that as well. But he's speaking, he has a crowd. He has a crowd that understands exactly what he's talking about. Some people are saying, yes, Pastor, preach. Amen. So, I like what he said at the end, though, where he said that um, he doesn't hate them 
and anyone yeah. who hates them is not a Christian or something. Yeah, of but that. I felt like that was just. Mm, to me, that even made it worse. <laughs> because you went on and why do I feel like you are not saying what you truly <laughs> feel? <laughs> Stop it. Because I, tr I, I honestly believe everybody has a a, a choice, mm -hmm. and you should be able to freely express your beliefs. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I like this quote is because he is differentiating that there is one side and the other, and that's fine. But if he's now saying that we should now by force pick another side, you lose me in that. But the part where he said that, uh, you know, he doesn't want to hate anyone. It's kind of like that thing where you say, oh, um, I have two daughters. Yeah. And I'm like, Nimi, you're great. You're fantastic. I love you so much. Okay, go, go to bed, Elsie. And I say, but I don't have any favoritisms, okay? okay? I love everyone the same. That's what he's doing. Like, you've bashed the person the whole day. And then now you're like, yeah, but we don't hate anybody. Yeah. But you're in The entangle in the yeah. web mm. of... Uh, okay. and particular, for me, I have issues with what he said. And especially the wording, the whole nollywood movies put people in bondage the entire idea put in bondage into immorality is, well if you think I about it that way from a that. christian perspective isn't that what it is like you should be able to you know not uh, uh, involve yourself in but then the is, I, don't, I don't, the think, no, I don't, don't think nollywood movies are immoral i'm sorry I don't think so. I think immoral is subjective. We're even getting I don't to think the it's point immoral. where now they're beginning to be comfortable with having sex scenes. It took a long while to get to that to point. Get there. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, so I don't think they deliberately that portray had. immorality. I know movies that you no. would even call immoral like in the sense Christian of immorality. That's Christians, I'm a Christian there. For Christian standards, no, no, Christians are funky. We're okay. talking about my Christian. Oh, my Christian. own Christian. Do you not know that there is? My family is Christian. Isn't it deeper life or something? I wanted to say that, and this is one of the issues that I have when we look at the religious you know mindset there's a lot of division mm. because to be honest when you look at the nollywood industry you have a lot of faith based mm. people i mean look at adesua mm. look at you have a lot of people who are shan okay, you, when you when you talk uh, about so spirituality yeah. Perfect, you know yes. they are people who speak the word you see it on their pages right but now it's you you are you, you what you're doing right now is you're you, what you're doing is you're causing division you're saying yeah. that these people even if they are christians because now you're saying they are quote unquote quote, christians, christians because and they are, movies, to are leading thing, people yeah. to bondage so it's like oh if you are a christian and you're not doing the gospel movie industry then you're not really a yeah, christian because you know the image will have to work on getting you Carrie Adunobi to this yeah, sure. um, set because she has a very interesting take on she being does. a pastor yes. and, and a model. Also being, so, she's also so, a model and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Work on that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Moving on to other stories. Um, coronavirus has shown me that the so-called developed nations have invested more in the destruction of the planet and humans than they have invested in nourishing and pre preserving for tomorrow. Greed is not good in any form, and this is coming from Shion Kuti. He went on to say it is obvious that the world is unprepared to defend itself from the real enemy and if you're African take care but also know that is close by the people mm. of Amu or Dofi were not killed by coronavirus mm. yeah that's what he said you know a lot of people have come out in this in this period to be and they become activists and um, motivational speakers and I'm just like yawning on my table like okay but this guy his words just hit me hard and it's so true what he's saying and so important for someone for, I, there's a lot of activist uh, movements going on one of the things that i'm very passionate about apart from feminism is the environment and the climate mm -hmm. and we've been screaming this thing on top of our lungs so there's one of the reasons why i said i wanted to cut down meat and go on vegan journey and all that stuff mm -hmm. and you see now that the one thing <laughs> the one <laughs> thing that um is happening with the coronavirus is the let's say the cleansing of yes, the earth exactly. there's there's new fishes that are swimming in canals that have never even flown in the last god how many knows years mm -hmm. and you can start to wonder because the foreigners and the developed countries are so quick to pointing to, our, to us that africa is the weakest link and we're the ones doing this and we're not this and but they're so greedy and that have a very big fact um, um plus part to play in polluting our environment yeah. but it's still coronavirus and human beings are still dying. So it's it's unfair to not have a, a strong balance to admit that yes, yes, they pollute the earth, but it's still we still have a pandemic at hand yeah. and it's a serious issue. I think um what Shinkuti has said is spot on. Because the truth is I went to go and find out how much the United States because everybody knows that the United States is like the powerhouse when mm. it comes to war, yeah. when it comes to all of that. So I went to find out how much their military budget is and apparently they have over 700 and something billion dollars assigned to just fighting wars and doing all of that. And I remember that there was this particular senator, Senator Bernie Sanders, and he was, he, he was saying that we spend so much money 
on war we spend so much money on trying to maintain this image that you know the united states of america is this huge powerhouse and everything that we don't focus on the important things it's like now that coronavirus is here the veil is falling mm. away from people's eyes and they are realizing that what is most important now is health care the mm. environment climate all these mm. things are important the wars nobody cares about who's fighting anymore, anymore. Who's fighting anymore and i haven't anymore. heard any news on israel and the, palestine and the borders when we started yeah. this year mm -hmm. when we heard this year there were mm -hmm. rumors of world war three yeah when coronavirus came what happened everybody abandoned, abandoned all talks of war because right. now we realize that this is a virus that doesn't care it doesn't you, whether you're a senator whether yeah. you're a poor person whether you're a rich person it it's hard for me not to believe care. that the earth is trying to tell us to calm down like so, it's enough and if we're not going to do it they're going to do it for us exactly. um we've lost a lot of lives in just one year yeah, now we're even in the half we're not halfway through so um it's something that we need to obviously think about mm -hmm. nigerians don't think about about environment either and that's the only thing that i can pick up from his um, text his write-up that didn't yeah. really accumulate that apart from the fact that foreigners and developed countries are the master leaders let's not even go into china and whatever lot. we still have a part to play our, well, yeah. if you're eating fish in nigeria you're pretty much eating plastic because that's the what that's what swims with our fishes in this country okay um so <laughs> um we all are affected and it's something yeah. that we need to talk about yeah. yeah. Okay, so I always say it's that when Shion is speaking, I'm not on his <laughs> level of um, whatever he takes to understand. So I'm not going to pretend mm -hmm. I understand. But from what you have said, I definitely do agree that um, this is telling us to calm down and yeah. chill. Because yeah. I don't think there was going to be anything that would make us just say, you know what, self-isolate yeah. yeah. and stay in your homes in your for house. a while. Like you go to the streets that mm -hmm. is usually crowded mm -hmm. and it's free and all. So I yeah. think this is a good place for people to also sit back and think about yeah. their actions and inactions. And when we finally beat this, because I know and hope oh, that we good. will, let's be better yes. and I hope it do the right things. Yeah. 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 yeah, yes, because I yeah. hope we can't. It should be, it should be very seriously. sad if we reset. If we go back to, to yeah, how things were before, mm. it would be very, very sad, to be honest. All right, it's time for a quick break, but when we return, there is more to discuss. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I decide every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like Alibaba? Alibaba. Now? Oh, <laughs> are you? Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to dull. Everybody feeling alright. Still make music and people are still buying. Sometimes I they look myself minimal. Are you? music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, Sleeping early. Sleeping early. Welcome back. One thing I'll never do is idolize strangers' relationship or marriages. We all know the unwritten rule of social media. No one shows their struggle. Focus on you and your partner. Figure out what works for both of you and don't be comparing your partner to random people online. This is coming from ex-Big Brother Ninja housemate, Leo Da Silva. Hmm. I think it's pretty simple and straightforward. Yeah, exactly. Right? It is. Like this. You do not lie. I feel like that was very, very sound advice. Mm -hmm. People should stop comparing and people should realize that relationships are different. But like I keep on saying, domestic violence and all of those things, that's not what we are talking about when we mm. say don't compare a relationship with mm -hmm. <laughs> don't compare your relationship to others. But I'm saying the peculiarities that come within your relationships depends on you and your partner, your beliefs, your values, you know, whatever it is that applies to me and my partner might not necessarily apply to you and your partner. There's people that could do long distance, for instance, but I would decide that, oh, I cannot do long distance. But so the, to, you can imagine if the person who, like, who is okay with long distance is looking at my relationship and wondering, oh, when will my relationship be like this? Mm. So people need to realize that they are, when it comes to especially romantic relationships, there are certain peculiarities that are dependent on you and your partner, your personalities, your individuality, that is going to rub off on your relationship and you might not find that in somebody else's own. So maybe it's better you don't compare. I mean, when you put it like that, it makes sense. But when I read it, I didn't really agree. The only thing I agreed to was that you shouldn't compare it to people that are online, random people that are online. But I think there's a very good um, 
sense of security I get when I am influenced by other people that are in relationships, especially people that have done it before and have done it for a long time. So I'd like to know if the issues that I'm dealing with are, are serious red flags or that they're just normal problems that you can work your way through. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to know if the arguing style is something that's healthy, especially when I'm uncertain about certain things, right? Because you're dealing with someone that is a, of a different personality. Like for my relationship, I'm extroverted, is introverted. We always respond to things differently all the time all the time so for me it's like i'm not I, he can't I, I i don't understand how he's reacting that way i need advice and usually i don't go to my friends i go to people who are in relationships that i know of like my, my mom's friends that have similar dynamics where the man is really quiet and the man's really outspoken like i get a lot of advice from that um and it keeps me on ground it keeps me on check if you go back to the relationship where i've been where i was before this one the reason why i broke up with him was because i actually went and sought and uh, seek advice from other couples as well mm -hmm. then then to give me understanding that this is actually a red flag and that would not go away and that can grow and all that stuff so mm -hmm. sometimes i don't have the capacity to understand fully my environment because i'm too into it and love is blind yeah. and can dominate you know switch that yeah, brain but, but system that or getting advice yeah. you know, that's, getting that's, that's advice. why i said not the only thing i don't I, I, the only thing i agree know. with is him comp that's why i started with yeah. i said the only thing i don't accept is him i mean the, thing, the only thing i accept with this quote is that you're comparing to people that are online that you don't know of but that your relationship should well, be closed from what in. you have said yeah. You are still not comparing. Yeah, exactly. Right. Which is what I wanted to say. You're not comparing. You're getting right. advice. You're getting advice from them. You're not saying yeah. my so relationship you must can't be even like this. You say that what they are telling you is, a, in fact, I can beat my chest to tell you what they are telling you is not exactly how their relationship goes. Exactly. But they will tell you the good things and whatever sounds perfect and nice. But like you said, love blinds. And when you love someone, you take a lot of things and you mm. do a lot of things. They yeah. will never tell you the what happens things. in that relationship. Yes, they will never ever give like, you the full picture. I, I, like so, I feel like some advices I've got to know personally are pretty down to earth. Like the, some people will tell that, you I'm that. I'm not saying the advices are not down to earth. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm saying it's it doesn't the mean they are comparing their relationship to yours. Because if we have to lay it out, which is almost impossible. Yeah. You are not getting exactly what is happening in their in relationship. Their relationship. Right. So yes, I get where you're coming from, where she's coming from. So it's it's basically about the individual and right. the person. Yeah. Even the when the they day. tell you at the end of the day, of course, you still have to see. You still have to and look decide. and curb it so, to your yeah. own relationship. Do you like it this way? Okay, you also use the example of being introverted and extroverted. The fact that you have understood that this is the kind of person he is, mm -hmm. and now you understand your space and how you react to it, it has helped you. Yeah. So you might not even necessarily need to speak to people. Yes, it's good to speak to people, but you can easily find out what are the traits of an introvert or an mm. extrovert and understand if you want to cope with this. Yeah. Now, the problem will come when you begin to compare him to so someone who's an extrovert. extroverted boyfriend and girlfriend yeah. and they go out together you yeah. feel like, oh, why can't a man do this? Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, so that's that the is the problem. problem. And, that's the right. and, and the truth right. is, at the end of the day, you already know the individual, yeah. your boyfriend, you know the kind of person he is, which is why I still say it boils down to different individuals. Yeah. So, so you can't really use... boyfriend's fiance. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so it still boils down to like the yeah. different individuals and different relationship models would right. not work for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some people who are in open relationships. Yeah. There are some people who are polyamorous. You know, they're different, you know. Different, so if yeah. you are going to start comparing, oh, your yeah. relationship, or oh, this person's relationship, yeah. call, yeah. do you understand? Yeah. Oh, you have to call me all the time. Yes, that no. even if you say that way, the what bring, comes to my mind is comparison in the social media space. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so I know for, I remember Valentine's Day, we talked about it, and mm -hmm. I was complaining that my friends are having marital issues because the guy didn't post, or he didn't give them something that they yes. could post on social media exactly. because their friend has posted. So if that's what he's talking about, then yeah, yeah that is, course, I think I that it. is where it's coming yes. from. I didn't right. expect that we're going to dwell on that topic, but we did. <laughs> so moving on to another very interesting one. A young man who got married at 23, who is now 27, um, is having issues. Here is a story. His wife who studied law has a ton of debt of about $195,000 for both undergrad and now law school. But over the past year, she changed her mind about being alone or, and also she doesn't want to be a lawyer anymore. Talking about wanting to be a teacher. Now the young man is upset because if she works as a teacher, her starting salary will barely clear $35,000 in the next few years. To top uh -huh. it all, while having this conversation, she <coughs> mentioned their plan to have children in a few years and how she would love to be a stay-at-home mom. 
<laughs> which she responded by asking how she thinks they are going to afford that with two hundred thousand dollars debt in his own income the wife got mad saying he's trying to use her debt to postpone major life events <laughs> she also said um he's prioritizing money over her happiness so his question is pretty simple and i'm going to quote it the way he put it am i wrong for considering a divorce he's not wrong for considering a divorce because one thing I always say when it comes to relationships, and if, I think I was on this table when we were talking, when one lady was saying she doesn't mind if there's no Gary, if there's no fish, and I was saying <laughs> that finances, <laughs> and I was saying that finances play a very huge role mm. in you know your relationship. They could have started off perfect, um, doughy eyes, sparkles in love. In school. I'm gonna support you. I'm Love gonna support you your dreams. So but look at what happened at the end of the day. She has a huge amount of debt. And they are married so that debt is like kind of automatically is yes, yes so people don't always understand that the conversation around finances is very very important Highly there's so important. many people that are in Highly. love and the reason why they divorce is not even because of children or anything. It's, it's simply because of yeah. just finances. And look at what is happening now. It's because of finances that they're going to get a divorce. Because now she has realized they that. They're going to consider. That's, what's, that's consider. what's happening with China with coronavirus. I remember when that came out, I kept asking, like, why are they all divorcing? And one mm. of the stats that are coming out now is because of finances. So because they're not able to work and then their lifestyles you are being threatened. So, many, yeah. so there's a lot of tension. So, yeah, finances is actually really important. She mm. sounds like somebody that, I've noticed that with, today's world i'm, I'm going to um, bash feminist fem feminists here a little bit um there's some people that are <clears throat> woke women but they are woke by mirroring so they've heard people say these things so they say it because it's like the woke thing to say now right so it's woke to say that um i don't i i, I will not be unhappy and i will choose what i love mm -hmm. but you're not soaking in the, the, the depth of what that means the reality the reality of that so to say that oh he doesn't then she he says oh maybe we shouldn't have kids now it's like you've heard them say um men are whatever so you're not it's like she's just regurgitating things mm -hmm. that she has heard and not really mm -hmm. thought about it um one of the most important things for me especially when you're biting yourself with someone is money i need to understand the level that you're on um and how much wealth you want to um, acquire. acquire. That's simple for me. Because depending on how, what your answer is, is it to show me how you're going to spend and where you're going to spend it on. A person that has that much debt in school, mm -hmm. like... But well, she's passionate. But you're teach. passionate really? about teaching, first of all. Then you're also passionate about being a housewife. It's I'm like confused. so confusing. Why did you it's like, what is going on? Process. Why did you even study law in the first place? If law wasn't what you wanted and to do, and you know, want to not be a teacher, you don't want to have kids, but also don't want to work. Like, how are you going to pay this debt? I mean, as a responsible all this, adult, all this I feel like this is things you should it's, think it's about. Even, it's, it's fine that she's been confused because you know, the last time we had the women conversation, and Kenny was saying that when we were saying, um, uh, the millennials have it yeah. all together, and she was saying she thinks it's yeah. not it. So, I think she's in that phase, mm. and I think this is this are some of the disadvantages when people say getting married. Early can, early be can be a problem. Can be a problem. You have to find yourself in, in your that. own yourself very long. before you yeah. <laughs> come and add your problem to another person's yeah. problem. <laughs> of course, it has worked for some. There are people yeah. who, yeah, true. excuse me, started really early, 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 and they've been able to sail through. But yeah. sometimes it doesn't work that way. Now she's discovering herself, herself. but she's forgetting that Her she has bills to, to pay. pay. And then my problem is her saying you are you are prioritizing money, money yeah. over I'm my like, personal happiness. Really, pay your bills, then you can be happy. It's that simple. <laughs> And then There's do, a huge debt. I don't really think you should consider a divorce just yet, though. Okay. I still think that we can... This is something that you can talk about. This is something that... They were talking sounds, about it she's, well, it's just I feel like if we flip genders, because that was the first thing I did in my mm -hmm. head. Yeah. I flipped genders and I, I do not have any empathy. If it was a woman that was asking this question, I'll tell her to divorce the man. Right. I'll tell her that she should move on because that is a financial embargo on her. Yeah. And the person in question is not willing to even consider the fact that there is a huge debt. I think How she's going just to very uneducated. This? I think she's very ignorant. He if even somebody says, can you work for a few years? Work for a few years in a As a lawyer, pay, yeah. Nah, yeah. Get some money, so pay off this no, This debt. person is, is a lot more ignorant than that. You need to either get her to a financial consultant mm. to lay her life down in numbers. Mm -hmm. You need to find somebody, or an adult, or somebody who's Except a mom, he wants to, to take up that job. It's not, it's not that you shouldn't be getting life. married if you're not ready to do all that job. Because I don't, wow. think, I don't think that when you enter a relationship, more or less a marriage, mm -hmm. your first um, response to a problem is divorce. That I don't is really not support his, I don't think this is his first response. He's, He's having a conversation. He has had conversations with her. 
yeah. and a disposition towards it from his right up is, is a nonchalant one. He's right. saying, it is you, are not you are not considering my, my own happiness. You're not considering what I want. But so so even in this whole reality, thing, eh? I, I want to get into it for a long time or forever if God let it be that way. But I'm not going to carry on embargoes that would choke me. Even I'm the Bible not, says, I will give you if he said the he has gone for therapy, that you can if he has this to the parents, he's added everybody involved and she's refused. Do you know how Maybe. much therapy and financial consultant cost? Because we're talking of death right now. Exactly. You can do therapy with your, with your, with your yeah. auntie. You can do therapy uh, with your okay, well, they are, they are in the daughter place. or something. <laughs> you can do therapy. There's some, they can't, you can't tell me that there isn't anyone that can speak into this couple's life until it sounds like it is here. I mean, it is growing and he has every right for it to grow. But Why until do you it is think here, it is not here for him? Because no, you are He's saying that no, he's had, no. had a conversation. 200k what is death here is for a me lot. is not what is here for you. That's what you should understand. Uh -huh. And for you one can person, try, you can try to, to work hard on the hard, relationship. It should be very hard. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for watching, and that's how I wrap up this episode of Tea Time. You can visit our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa to catch up on this and all our exclusive content, and please do subscribe at Plus TV Africa. You can also watch Tea Time on Auto TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you as always will go to my pop of girls, Ife Omai and Nimiko Dekombi, and the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. Do stay with us.